are going to look at uh, creating a simple blend in the conceptual massing environment. So let us start with a rectangle of model lines and extrude them and we get a box. So this is not locked, so not locked there. Just to show you what happens, we'll lock it and then pick that again. Now we get the padlock, so let's unlock it. So when it's unlocked, we can edit this profile on the top and we can drag that line out there and maybe put a, an arc on that corner. And there we have a blend, very simple. So one little thing to know about blends is that from model lines is that when you select the if you select the top and you go to edit profile it takes you straight into that if you select the line on the base and edit profile again takes you straight into that however if you pick a side surface and do edit profile you are then prompted well which do you want to edit the top or the bottom and uh, you can't see this in the video but there is a little rectangle uh, l-shaped thing with a pencil on it indicating whether you want to select top or bottom so let's select the top and uh, then you can edit that change it again if you want oh let's just fix these lock tangent buttons there and so that when we start playing around with this it's not going to mess it up and so that's that's method one method two is using a shape that uh, an extrusion that's been created from reference lines now when you select that shape it's automatically locked so you have to unlock it and then the edit profile command becomes available and if you click on that it only edits the top that is your only option so if i go back and i try to pick side edit profile it takes the top and if i pick the base edit profile to the top again so the reason for that is that the, the base is actually controlled by reference lines and those mean that you can't use the sketch edit mode on that but of course we can here so let's just change this and uh, I'm using this arc tool because it's just a very quick way of doing a demo if you start drawing extra lines it just takes a lot longer so we don't want to waste your time you know how valuable that is we want to get on to some more exciting stuff so that's pretty much that third method here is to have two different profiles in this case they're model lines and the first one is hosted on level one and the second one is hosted on level two so if i just select that lot create form there we have our blend and we could select the side and edit profile again we get prompted do we want the top or the bottom so let's go for the top and do my ubiquitous arc finish and let's just try once more edit profile the bottom and this time we will do a different one. So we should hopefully get some more interesting shapes. We have a twisted twisted curve there, a nerve surface, and that's what we're going to be talking about a little later on. So the next method, the last one, is my tab select this is a profile in this case it's an adaptive component that has some parametric controls for the for the shape size of it rather so i'm going to uh, copy that 
clipboard and then paste to another level. Paste that to level two. Select it. Very annoying. It just selects by default. It uh, selects just one line within the profile instead of the whole thing. And if I select that one as well, got them both, I think. Create form. And there we have it. And, and now the difference here is that to, to change this, you select the profile family and you can still push and pull that. Now the interesting thing here is that if we select that and we go to edit family and we go to the corner there and we create yet another arc on there and let's make that parametric bring this back in screen oops radius um, yeah we'll make that instance and see what we get load that back in the right and there we have it so sometimes you can get away with changing the number of edges on the profile and, and loading back in but sometimes if you push it too far it'll just break so uh, that's four different ways of creating a profile and we'll, we'll just go one more little demo we will select two reference line circles which are in diff different planes they're not parallel create form and you get some interesting stuff going on there and if I select the reference line and change its radius oh it didn't like that one bit okay that is an example of what Revit does now we're probably getting too close to the edge here but what we will do is cancel out of that and I'll try and make it a little less dramatic Eighteen instead of thirty. Yes, and it works. So I'd have to investigate that, but I'm thinking that that radius was bringing this down below the edge there, and uh, that was all too much for it. Remember, it's very fussy about stuff like that. Um, so there we have it. That's creating blends. It's just straightforward blends, not lofts, which is another story.